Hello there fellow NPCs, I am Carmen Scythe and today we're going to continue to play the ladder. Uh, we have just finished, uh, no we have not finished anything. We just tried to protect little Kylie from the big bad evil godfather guy. And uh, only to realize it, uh, he, uh, that Luke Wright is indeed Kylie's godfather and he seems to like her. I don't get it. Um, but something I f started thinking about when I was watching the when I was editing the last video was the ghost in the car was just sitting there watching forward like she was an actual passenger. That makes me wonder: is she not haunting Luke in the same way as she is the others? Because. I could imagine seeing that the ghost would try to attack Luke there or haunt him the same way she did uh, Rebecca when uh, they were almost in a car crash. But no, she was just sitting there in the passenger seat, just looking forward. Let's see, let's find out what the deal with Luke and the ghost is. But I also think she, he still might be haunted because he wanted that mirror gone. So maybe there is something else going on. But that is something we have to figure out in the later, uh, later in the game. But now, let's go. October 27th, Thursday. The brief lull the past two days has offered is nice while it lasted. Or as nice as it can get with a... Uh, with worries of Isabella's whereabouts creeping up to me every now and then. She hasn't showed up after the last uh, talk we had in the hallway, and the dinner I bought had since been given to a different neighbor before it spoils. By all means, this shouldn't be anything to lose sleep over. She's gone on work trips before, usually for a day or two, this might simply be one of those. Although it's often uh, with a message saying exactly where. But it's the dour note she has sent at our last chat with that Nos. Like an ugly premonition. Mm, yeah. I mean... Maybe she would tell you if you weren't so damn selfish. And thinking yourself superior to everyone else. And as expected, just as things started to settle, settle and, already, and a steady rhythm finally worms its way back to my routine. Thursday morning brings further disturbance to the now calm waters. With a little ceremony, though still enough to ripple through everything. In retrospect, I really should have seen this coming. Luxbone is a small city, relatively speaking. Compared to, say, London or Glasgow, it's nothing but a tiny mass of land boasting a mayx population of 68,000. Those numbers alone are nothing to scoff, or scoff at when standing in a busy street. And if we pay close, atten close enough attention, faces, talking, uh, faces taking the crosswalk or riding the subway will soon grow familiar. Wait, I just saw something here. Why the fuck do you have a tail? Oh no, you have the bad cat back backpack. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, bad cat backpack. Oh, okay. That, that was hard. Um, but yeah, that's why she has a tail. How unfortunate that uh, that out of that number it has to be Tio fucking Luke I encountered more than once. Oh, you know, a few problems Whoa. popping up here and there that the agents failed to tell us somehow. Mm. I think a few hired hands can't fix, of course. Oh, what are you gonna blame Rose and Isabella for? I would have preferred a place near the city and something that's new to save us all the trouble. But darling wife insisted. She insisted because it's a gift to you? Uh, who am I to say no? You don't. So you don't even want the place? Or do you just want to rag on uh, your wife? Oh, are you kidding me? 
His smug head is the first thing I see upon turning into the hall, in spite of a small crowd of parents and students gathered at the corridor for the primary career day. It's not that he stands out, he's pretty unremarkable at first glance, frankly. However, it's his countenance that draws people's eyes to him. The manner he carries himself with all the confidence in the world, his mere presence dwarfing everything around him. I'm willing to make a bet he's also enjoying the attention it garners him, especially the ones coming from the women. What an ass. <clears throat> I no doubt. A single glance at him and I know immediately that, one way or another, if we ever bump into each other again, my day will effectively be ruined in some capacity. He also exudes that air. A sort that makes you want to run him over with a lorry and pass it off as an unfortunate accident. With him, it's either it's either you want to punch him or let yourself be charmed, there's no in-between. I'm glad to do the honor of the former myself, but alas, there are people around us. Now I'm stuck with having to face one of the two. I shouldn't have volunteered. <laughs> At the time, helping out sounded a good idea. I have no classes left today until after lunch. I could have opted to stay at the teacher's lunch and work on my lesson plans, but that means being left alone with our deputy head and his chatter. He's a good man, but Krivens, he can talk in one's ear off. So, the moment an opportunity rose, I jumped on it. It's a similar task to boot. Don't like that it's being cut off right here. It could easily just have been made a little bit smaller, but then it wouldn't feel like it's as big, I guess. Just deliver a whole box of materials and a few posters for the event, and maybe stay around to assist if time will allow it. I just wasn't expecting him to show up here. Out of the frying pan and into the fire. Had I known, I would have stayed and suffered through our deputy, deputy's impromptu speeches about his life crisis instead. But what's done is done. Going back is also out of the question. With how unexpectedly heavy the load I'm carrying is, I'd hate to lug this for a trip back just because my pride can take another second of interaction with the guy. He's insufferable, alright. But I've had my fair share of dealings with teens of... More or less, the same temperament, all considerably younger than him, and they listened. If he wants to be difficult like last time, so be it, but he can be bet his sorry English ass I'm not standing down. Well, that's the thing, when you grow up and you have that personality trait and you haven't been told no before, you will be, you are essentially told that it's okay to behave like that. And... Why would you change? You've been told it's alright to behave like that, like an ass. Left me no other choice, I brace myself and suck in a breath. Mustering every bit of patience I have as I step into the hall. My grip on the box tightens when I pull it closer to me, and attempt to assume a low-key air as I amble towards the room. The box is nothing. It's not big enough to hide my face, even with this stuff piled on top. But if all else fails, I can just hit him with it. Still, a small prayer forms in my head. If there's even one listening out there, please grant me enough restraint. Better yet, I hope he doesn't notice me at all. That'll definitely make my life easier. Seriously, how hard can it be? He's standing a few ways from, from the door, and there are plenty of people between us uh, to use for cover. I, if I'm careful, I can just go in, hand in a stupid box to whoever's in charge, forget every plan of staying longer than necessary, and step out as soon as I can. Easy as pie. But as luck would have it, the exact moment I reach the room's threshold, something, someone, barrels towards me. Kylie. She lashes onto my waist before topping the sudden commotion with a gleeful squeal. I knew it's you! The force of it nearly throws me off balance, sending me the items stacked atop the box set tilting dangerously to the sides. With a shout added weight at my waist, pinning me on the spot and, the, and both of my hands occupied, watching is the only thing I'm able to do. 
The short seconds in between slows as every the short seconds in between snows as everything gradually slides off the box's small surface. Under different circumstances, this would have made for a funny story some other time. Comical even. Until another set of hands reaches out and steadily steadies the posters, threatening to take the nose dive right up to the floor. Oh, careful now, Daisy. Don't make a mess here. My entire body freezes. Upon hearing his voice alone, an irritation, an irrational impulse to hit him immediately bubbles up. But before my limbs could catch up with what my brain is currently screaming at me, he moves to take the burden off my arms. Irritation gives way to surprise, then confusion. It is in that moment when instinct finally kicks in and I tug the box closer to me before he can fully lift it off. What are you doing? What does it look like? You're surprisingly slow on the uptake with someone of your profession, aren't you? Uh, bloody, doesn't this school have people for this kind of work? <laughs> so much for being a center of academic excellence. Schools don't, don't have servants. You dumb prick. I am going to ignore that slight to my alma mater and my work, because that's not what I'm trying to get at. You know what? Why don't we just rephrase that to something you'll easily understand? Why exactly are you doing this? Well, you look like you could use a bit of help. Have you seen your face while you were heaving this around? Mister, I'm pretty sure if there's ever a look on my face, it's entirely because I saw something extremely unpleasant this morning. God damn. <laughs> aren't you a ball of sunshine today, Daisy? Having a bad day, aren't we? Oh, you have no idea. I'd put it away if I were you. You might scare the children. You don't have to worry about that. This isn't my department. I was just asked to bring these. Anyway, I can handle this myself, mister. The room's just right over there. Behind you, in fact. Now, if you could please move over and make way, it would do the whole world some good. Keeping my voice level throughout is a miracle in itself, but regardless of how polite my request is, it doesn't budge. The what I just said made a fly over his head. Were, were my choice of words really that difficult to comprehend? Surely it shouldn't be that hard. I think he might be a little touched in the head. I'd like to ask him that, actually, but Kylie chooses the instant to pipe in. Don't worry, Miss Pink. Tio's strong. You can leave this to him. My papa does it lots of times, but I'm not allowed to talk about it to anyone. What, what does that mean? What, what kind of thing uh, is your dad letting Tio Luke do? That you can't talk about? Tio says it's confer... Confide... Confidence. <laughs> Confidence. Confidential. Munchkin. Oh, this is what... Um, oh! Is, this is what... Uh, um, Ashen is... Uh, look, uh, checking into. He knew that... Luke Wright is a bad guy. And Kylie's dad is asking Luke to do things. So it's not just uh, economical criminal. Perhaps it's violent criminal. But Luke doesn't look like the type of guy who would do anything violent. He's, he would have someone do it for him. That's right. Tio's smart, isn't he, Miss Pink? I'm still uh, of the opinion that he's a piece of shite, but I must admit his got other excitement is contagious, as always. A smile makes its way to my lips. She has yet to budge from her place, though to be honest, I'm starting to lose some feeling on my stomach with how tightly she's wound her arms around it. I'm sure he is, Kylie. But I'm also sure he'll find better use for it elsewhere. Like helping you out! Oh, well, that's one thing, but 
<laughs> you heard the kid. No one's asking you. Oh, you wound me, woman. Gladly. And I'm quite certain I can do more damage than that. Shall we give it a try? Again? Ah, <laughs> yeah. He pales Samus for a bit until he ultimately decides against saying anything and settles for a brief show of discomfort instead. He's probably having a flashback of the last time we met. His composure when he finally regains some of his bearings says it all. It's nothing short of hilarious if I do say so myself. I I'll have you know that threats never work on me, Daisy. Not in a million years, not ever. You're assuming it's a threat. How cute. Ew. But th that too, I'm not scared of you. Oh, be scared of her, please. Just because you landed a hit. Uh -huh. Do go on. Keep telling yourself that. How about two hits? It was a fluke, you hear? I was caught off guard and your damn book left a dent. If I end up in a hospital because of what you did, I'm sending the chief of Luxburg police after you, woman. I know him personally. You don't say. Just give me that bloody box. No. He snatches it out of my arms before a single word of protest ex exits my mouth and quickly disappears behind the classroom. Not that it matters who brings it in now, my prior ir irritation has already melted into amusement. It's not so bad once you figure out how his temperament works. It's almost similar to a child. Though, I still have to ask. Kylie, did your Tio eat something bad before coming here? Eat bad? Eat something bad? What do you mean? He's unusually oh. nice today. A far-fetched today, I know, but it's the only reason I can think of why this arsehole is suddenly acting like a decent human he is, quite frankly, far from being. First and foremost, we didn't end our last meeting on a good note. If I were him, I'd avoid the every person who put a dent on his skull, as he so aptly put it. Why is he acting friendly two days later? He always is, but I made him promise to be extra nice to you since you helped me so much. I think you're gonna be great friends. Uh, I quickly stomped on the urge to groan loudly or gag at that. He's the last person I'd ever want to be chummy with in this whole city, but Kylie doesn't need to know that. Are you sure it's not something he ate during breakfast? I gave him some jelly babies this morning. Really brought me lots of them. Mama said I should share, so I offered half of it to Tia when he picked me up. He likes the black ones. Ew. Oh, that's probably why he's weird. Jelly baby overdose. He could have done everyone a favor and choked on them while he's at it. Do you want some? I've got more! You shouldn't bring candy to school, Kylie. I couldn't play Melody or Kakako this morning, but I'm sure it'll be fine sharing some of it with you. No, I'm not really very fond of them. I was just asking. Oh, where's your mom, by the way? Out of town with Papa. An unexpected pang hits me at her words. The statement, though innocent enough, unearths a whole trunk of memories from childhood. So eerily familiar. Nights spent eating dinner alone, a number of days coming home to an empty house growing with each passing year, and sometimes several Christmas Eves spent with relatives instead of my own family. It's too late to think about it now, but when I remember, the dull ache is still there. Familiar though, lessened by the years now. Familiar, though lessened by the years now. Beside me, Kylie takes a step back, having gotten tired of clinging to me. It's nothing but sharing her. She doesn't seem to be affected by that. Although it makes me wonder how much of it is real and how much it, uh, and how much is there to mask the loneliness, if there, if there's even one. What a lucky child. Weren't they informed of career day beforehand? Yeah, I told them all about it. Mama was looking forward to it. And they still left? Uh-huh. It's important business, so it can't be helped. They promise to tell me about it when they come back tomorrow, though. Papa said he'll give me a gift if I behave. I've been a good girl, right, Miss Pink? You always are. 
But they asked that douche, I mean, they asked your Tio to look after you? For this? Nope, they didn't. No? Then how? It was supposed to be Tia. Mama likes her better than Tio, so she asked yeah. her, but she's sick and had to visit the doctor today. Okay, so that's either because of the ghost or because she's pregnant. Hmm, 27th of October. That's what it was, right? Now it was 20... Oh, I don't remember what date it was. Uh... Too bad there is no what happened... Uh, no, nothing that shows what's today's date maybe in profiles no maybe in uh, relationship no ah can't figure it out oh that's supposed to be a secret by the way oh, but i think it's a bit confusing because tio said she also went shopping mm, it's because she's pregnant there we go that's unfair don't you think so miss pink me to go out when I'm sick. It's still okay though, since Teal always buys me sweets before we go home. I'm gonna ask for a parfait today, extra large. Dude, with all these candy and um, yeah, candy for breakfast, parfaits every time you're out with Teal, uh, Teal, and uh, uh, bread pudding. You're gonna be a large girl. I mean, enjoy youth, of course. But also, you need to watch that uh, before you grow up. Don't tell Takako, okay? Listening to her like this, it's easy to get a picture of where Kylie's fondness for the guy comes from. She's far from a demanding child unless you've made a promise of some sort. She never forgets those. She'll make friends with anyone wherever she is. Buy her a few things and voila, you're settled. No wonder she's so attached to the man. The douche probably showers her with gifts whenever he can. I can't say it's uh, I can't say if the sentiment is the same for the latter, however. He doesn't seem the type and probably just does it for the sake of getting some peace and quiet whenever he's with the girl. Classic techniques. But before that, I'm gonna show him to everyone first. It's gonna be great! No one else has a gazillionaire fairy godfather. Fairy Godfather, okay. Also, also, when I grow up, I'm gonna be exactly like him and marry someone really handsome. Like Tia did. That way, I can be awesome too. You don't have to, uh, I want to think that uh, Hana did marry him because she actually fell in love with him. Not because he's handsome. There's some sort of misguided logic in there that I'd like to correct. But before I can say my piece, douchebag steps in, fresh out of the commotion from the classroom behind us, and plows into the conversation with, with every subtlety a wrecking ball has. No shy given, despite no one asking for his opinion. Munchkin, sweetie, trust me. You don't have to marry someone for that to happen. I don't? <laughs> Just do your thing, darling. I'm quite sure you can do great things on your own without lugging around the extra baggage with you. Is... is that how you view... Hana? Tia married you. Kylie drops the statement in a sort of preface. And the moment it lands, the douche finds himself grappling with the conversation. Yeah, I, well, that's... That's true, Munchkin, technically. But it's not the same thing. A small frown creases a girl's eyebrows as she tries to comprehend the two years of rather vague explanation. It's not surprising either, when Luke tends to stay under the child's questioning gaze. It's familiar. I've seen the same look uh, a great deal of times before, on Ashton, whenever he's trying to say something he can't quite phrase. Another second passes before the douche moves, kneeling in front of Kali and placing both his hands on either side of her shoulder. Kind is the last word I'll ever use to describe the man, but in this moment, there's a smile on his face I can't place. 
intended by all means for someone as obnoxious as him. It's a curious thing to see, if not a bit odd. Listen here, sweetie. Tia... Tia was already a great person before she met me. She is? But I don't see her doing anything. She's always at home. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's interesting. You think... Okay. So, don't you like Tia Hana? Because she, you think she's a slacker? Which is something Luke did to her and all of their uh, wealthy friends? Not always, Munchkin. Did you know she's really good at numbers? You're good with them too. You helped me with my homework once. Well, Tia's much, much better than me. She used to do maths with big numbers. No, gazillions. And she's <laughs> really, really good at it. So much so that her dad let her manage anything that had to do with it. That was even before she met me, too. Oh. You. Wow. Does that mean she's better than you? Oh, leagues, Munchkin. Way, way better than I'll ever be. For some reason, I don't think he's still talking about his wife's mathematical prowess as his voice trails off. In fact, if I had not been paying closer attention, I would have noticed a change in him. Yeah, I noticed that too. I mean, is does he know he's a bad guy? <clears throat> does he know that Rohana is much better than him in every respect? Is he doing this out of inferiority complex? The slight shift in his smile, from one that's tended to something wistful, like remembering a memory he's always been fond of, but has often kept to himself, and that a fleeing glance at it, a tiny, insignificant part of the world somehow also shifts. Opinions changing, impressions moving. You know what? Why don't you ask Tia next time you have homework, hmm? Okay, next time I'll ask her to help out. See? No need to marry a good-for-nothing bloke. Can I also tell her to not stay at home anymore? If Tia's good at it, I'm sure she can help you out too. Uh, I'm Papa. He computes a lot of numbers too. Tia can help him. <laughs> you go do that. I'm sure she'll love to hear it, Munchkin. Even if it's been a while since. And then silence from him. Then without missing, missing a beat, he turns Kylie around and lightly pats her shoulder in a gesture to end the conversation right here and there. Probably before he can say other things he's never intended to say or a, ch or a child is not meant to hear. But off you go first. I think I saw your friend run off to the other classroom. The one with the pigtails? Go say hi to her. You still have those jelly babies to give her, yes? Alright! But wait for me, okay? I've got loads more to show you. They put up my drawing on the bulletin the other day. I'm gonna take you there later. I'll be back. She soon disappears behind the small crowd, none the wiser to the sudden change in mood around her. And I don't understand what what Luke's deal is. Is he being? Is he actually a decent person? Is he actually a decent person, but simply can't handle it? Yeah, it sounds like a lot of inferiority complex. He. He sees himself as a good guy, a decent guy at least, but whenever he is with another adult, he has to prove himself and the only way for him to do that is by showing how weak-willed everyone else is. I think that's that might be it. I think I mentioned him having an inferiority complex uh, way before as well, actually. Luke straightens as soon as he, she's go, gone. Luke straightens, straightens as soon as she's gone. The expression on his face grows less kind now that there's no one to reassure. <laughs> Despite that, a chuckle still escapes me. He said it quickly snaps at me, an accusing glare clearing his eyes. Although it's less threatening now, considering, 
considering what I witnessed earlier. Funny how one person's impression of someone can easily change with that minute de with that minute detail. Why are you laughing like that? <laughs> Don't mind me. I just saw something surprising today. Don't let it bother you. And if you simply say, you know, something like, no, it's nice seeing you be nice and something in those lines and actually give him a pat on the shoulder, like, yeah, you did good. Then that could, could, not will, but could change him into growing as a better person. It could set a seed there. You know, putting it like that won't make me any less inclined to ask. <laughs> what is it, woman? If this is another one of your threats, I've already told you it isn't going to work on me. That good teacher act isn't going to fool anyone. What makes you think it has to do with you? I could have just remembered something funny. Not everything in this world revolves around you, mister. Well, it should. I am not daft, Daisy. It's on your face for all the world to see. Now, say it so we can be done with this stupid talk. <laughs> I let out another laugh. More to delay than to express any sort of amusement over the matter. In truth, I don't know where to start. One wrong move, eh, one wrong word, and I might offend the man. He's childish enough for that, even if I'm... Even if what I'm about to say are just mere honest observations. You really think what? Wait. Uh, now say what it is. Uh, it's on your face for all the world to see. That it's about him. Oh, I see. I think this is. You're good at handling her. And this will give us a plus with him. Yeah. This is the only time I would like to have different stats on Luke as well. So we could encourage a specific behavior in him. I mean, that would be a cool way to do it, but it would be so extremely, such an extremely big game. If we had different stats, we could improve in different characters. Oh well, regardless how he reacts, it's not like I'll have to impact on. It'll have an impact on anything between us. I have no plans of getting too friendly with a man, though he might have some good points. Emphasis on might. The best treatment I can hope myself to give him is to stop thinking of him as a sleazy douche. Besides, after seeing that look on him. I figure someone like him can use a little compliment here and there. He probably doesn't get it much considering how coarse his own language can get. Can't you act a wee bit polite for even a second of your life? It won't kill you. You'll easily get answers that way, you know? Instead of demanding things from people like a temperamental man-child. I'll be nice when I want to be, woman. Don't tell me what to do. And here I was just thinking how you're doing a brilliant job as Kylie's guardian. Oh, that's a really nice way of putting it. Uh, the way they phrase it in the options, I didn't really like that. You're good at handling Kylie. It goes just means something like you're good at bribing her with gifts. Uh, but this, is how they put it here, is much better. Was I mistaken? Was I mistaken? What? Sorry, I didn't catch that. Stop playing dumb. I hate to admit it. But you actually seem to be good with kids. Possibly even better than most of the teachers here. Mm, what do you know? I've expected him to just take it all in, bloat his ego more, and even brag about it. Instead, what I get from him is a son and res is a son resembling a squawk. Nope. Or maybe that's him choking on his own pride. I can't tell about the hubbub surrounding us. But when I glance at him, only a mortified expression is on his face. No. No? You should be proud of yourself. At least there's this one good thing about you. Isn't that nice to hear? Pretty sure not a lot of compliments get thrown around about you, knowing how you are. There are a lot of good things about me, Daisy. He's thinking that personally. 
How can you not? My hair, for one. There's also my extraordinary good looks. Wax lyrical about those all you want. I'd be happy to hear it any day. If that's all you consider yourself being good for, then yeah, there's that's an inferiority complex going on here somewhere. Praise anything about me but that. What is so repulsive about it? Even Kylie likes you. Shouldn't that tell you anything about yourself? Kylie is one kid, not even my own. Trust me. You do not want to see me bring a spawn of my own into this world. It will be an abomination. He knows he's a bad person. He doesn't... He doesn't want to be a parent because... He knows he will, he will be bad for it. He is not... He's... Trying to protect himself and the world from himself by not having children he knows it's bad and he's stopping his future generations from ruining ruining the world further is that what you keep telling yourself maybe is it any of your business no but if i didn't know any better i'd say this is because you yourself think you're a little piece of shite and somehow it'll pass on it doesn't work like that by the way the last remark just came out. There might be a sliver of truth in it, but I shouldn't have phrased it like that. Even for my own standards or the kind of person I'm talking to, it's still quite rude. An apology is already at my throat, but the, but the minute I open my mouth, all of what I have prepared myself to say dissipates. Lost in the moment in front of me. He has turned gaze outside, staring at some point past the building blocks the view of the sky. Equally lost in his thoughts. He's a vexing man. He's a vexing man under so many standards. However, in this moment, the morning light streaming from the window lends his feature features a certain air, softer, less severe than what he often flaunts. I might as well be looking at a different man. There's a tender note in his voice when he finds it. The words mutter under his breath, not intended for anyone but himself. Nevertheless, it reaches my ears, unintentional as it may be. You're right. She deserves someone far better than me. Hmm. All that talk about self-worth makes some sense now. It isn't some profound knowledge he pulled out of his arse. It has come from... It has come about because he's already been there. Likely still stuck in the middle of it. Preaching about how... Preaching about your own personal experiences is easier after all. Less room for mistakes, more for a dose of self-loathing. What a complicated man. Just when you thought you've already figured him out, he does one thing and says the other. People like him are the most difficult to gauge, far harder to understand. Yet it might be exactly for this reason why some are so easily shunned by him. It's the mystery that catches them. I'm wanting to find out what's underneath that bravado. Yeah, I'm feeling that too. Fuck you, Luke. I want to hate you. I won't kill myself among those, yet his winning personality isn't exactly my cup of tea. But sometimes, once you get a glimpse of what's beyond that... M that machismo, machismo, emphasizing that the man isn't such a steep hill to climb. If the comfortable silence we now share tells anything, that is. Perhaps this is as close to our friendship as we can get. Several insults flung around with a few shared silences in between. And that's not exactly a bad thing. It's not exactly a bad guy either, despite the awkward start we've had. Maybe it's for this reason that I can't resist throwing a little comment to lift his mood before leaving him. You know, Luke, you're not such a bad person. Is that supposed to make me feel better? I'm touched, Daisy. Take it how you will. But a little attitude change would help. A lot. Ah, bollocks. Right, of course. 
Let me know when you're done with your lecture, ma'am. And you can probably start by not leaving your wife out while you're having some quality time with your goddaughter. Who knows? Maybe that'll help change how the child sees her. Where did you even get the idea I'm leaving my wife out? Have you ever even met? No, but I did see her with you two last time. Oh! Oh, 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 oh this is going to be fun! His indifferent expression quickly dissolves into a confused scowl while I meet it with matching perplexity. It has only been two days, surely his memory isn't that bad. What? What was this? At the cafe, after you left. She was sitting right beside you. Kylie was at the back and you were driving. Daisy, are you sure you haven't accidentally hit yourself with your own book? Because <laughs> that damn thing's quite thick and I'm really getting worried about you. Oh, please be scared. It has only been a few days, and concussions can be dangerous. I suggest you have that checked. Well, you asked. I just answered. It's pretty rude to make her wait like that, by the way. How can I make her wait when she's not even with us? What? It was just Kylie and I that night. <laughs> now you're just pulling my leg. <sighs> Luke exhales, long and drawn out, his impatience, uh, impatience rapidly changing and companionable ever around us. In the face of it, I tense. I've accidentally stepped into another minefield. Any chat I've had with him so far has been like this. Why this still, still surprises me escapes me, but above my worries of uh, offending the man is my own bewilderment. I remember well enough what I saw that night, yet he says something completely different. Wifey was out with Kylie's mummy that night. She wasn't with us. How do you think I ended up on babysitting duty? Duty? You said you... You it's, you made it sound like you offered... Okay, yeah, of course you offered. Of course you would offer if she's going out with her mom. Yeah, of course. But... but it, in the front seat. And Kylie's... <laughs> Kylie sobs to reach my ears first, and then a familiar wave returns around my waist again. Hot tears seep through my blouse as she blurries her face in it, her arms winding tightly around me. Luke and I briefly exchange worried glances, his own lips shut tight with concern. Her cries are soft enough to not attract much attention. Most of the visitors have been ushered inside the rooms by now anyway. Those that still linger, though, watches our little group with great interest and concern. 